So, freighters and frigates are two of the most expensive things you can actually buy in No Man's Sky and with there being a variety of freighters and frigate types and not to mention the latest Echoes updates to them, it can get very confusing to figure out which ones you should be looking for. So, in this video I'll be going over absolutely everything you need to know about freighters and frigates and everything in between in No Man's Sky. And make sure you stick around until the end because I'll be telling you the fastest way you can get your hands on an S-Class freighter. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get stuck in. So, freighters are basically colossal interstellar starships, and you could think of them as a cross between your starship and the space stations, and you can also purchase them using your many, many units, but you can get your first freighter in your save for free, and I'll tell you how you can do that in just a minute. And you can now, since the endurance update, also totally customise your freighter as well by building an epic base inside of it, and I'll go into more detail about that later in the video. So, your freighter can warp to other star systems, and you can summon them to orbit wherever you currently are. And if you fancy the change of ship at the same time, you can also access all of your ships within your freighter's hangar. So basically, there's a reason they're amongst the most expensive things in No Man's Sky. The best S-Class ones could cost you upwards of hundreds of millions of units for the top spec, and the frigates you can get with them could also cost you just a fraction less than that. So you're going to need a lot of money. There are a fair few varieties of freighter in No Man's Sky and it's really up to you which one you go for in terms of how it looks. There is one called the Venator which looks like a Star Destroyer from the Star Wars universe. There is another one that slightly resembles the USS Enterprise from the Star Trek universe. And you can even get the frigate of the SSV Normandy SI-1 from Mass Effect as a reward for one of the expeditions. Whenever Hello Games allow us to replay them of course. There are capital freighters and regular freighters, which is somewhat confusing at times because you may find a capital freighter to be smaller than some of the regular sized freighters. And you can get them in different classes, so C, B, A and S, with the higher class ones having more inventory slots, a better hyperdrive and better free coordination modifiers as standard. You can upgrade some of these things, but more on that later in this video. And that brings me nicely on to how you can get your hands on a freighter, so as promised, in just a minute I'm going to tell you how you can get your first one for free. But before that, so often when you're exploring space, you're going to see a freighter and its frigates warp into the system you're currently in. So if you look out for a freighter icon amongst them, usually it's the biggest one, you can then go ahead and board it and talk to the captain about purchasing the freighter from them. So depending on its class, inventory size, installed technology components and other things it could range from say 50 million units to upwards of 200 million units so make sure you save up a lot of money. The next method of getting a freighter is when you encounter a space battle and these can happen one of two ways. The first way will usually happen every 5 warps after 3 in-game hours and you can literally warp into the middle of a giant space battle. Which of course you can ignore and fly away if you want to, or you can choose to help one freighter and destroy the other and its pirate fighters. These battles have been further improved recently with the Echoes update, making them seem much more like Star Wars, where I think it's a great addition. In these battles, if you are victorious in helping save one freighter and not letting the other one escape before you've destroyed it, you're going to be summoned to the capital freighter bridge by the captain and you'll be offered the chance to purchase a freighter from them or take a payment for helping save them. The second type of freighter space battle will see the captain of a capital ship send a distress signal to you and then you can choose to either fly over and help them in the battle or you could just ignore them and go about the rest of your business. But as of the endurance update you can enter the freighter bay at any time which is going to stop the battle or you could have a bit of fun and destroy the enemy, totally up to you. If you've already got yourself a free freighter you may want to just board another freighter just so you can check out what class it is in case it's an S class and you want to buy it. So, space battles are also how you can get your very first freighter for free. This is actually really quite simple, but it can be only done once per save, so make sure you use this opportunity to get yourself a good one. You will need to have made progress in the story to the point of carrying out your first warp to a new system, and crucially, you must not currently own a freighter. So, if you warp a few more times and spend up to 3 hours in the game, you're eventually going to come across this freighter battle that I just mentioned. And if you manage to destroy the attacking fighters in their ships, then head on up to the bridge of the capsule freighter you just saved, you'll be given the opportunity to become its new owner without actually spending any money. Now I would actually recommend here that you take payment if the freighter is a basic C-Class one because this opportunity will come up again, so wait until you perhaps get an A or an S-Class one to own for free. 
But once you have acquired that first free freighter, you can't then get another for free, so make sure you make it a good one. The initial amount of inventory slots on a freighter is going to depend on the class, because usually the higher the class, the more inventory slots as standard. This is not always a written rule, but more of a guideline. However, as with your exosuits, starships and multi-tools, you can also increase the amount of inventory slots your freighter has. You can do this by using cargo bulkheads, and you can get these a number of ways, and these include, but are not limited to, a reward from saving a freighter from pirates, the final reward when exploring derelict freighters, and more on those in a few minutes by the way, and from storage containers at crashed freighter sites. Again, more on those in just a few minutes. You can have up to 120 cargo slots and 60 tech slots at S-Class in a freighter, so more than anything else in the game. So, storing items in your freighter is pretty simple, but without the matter beam, you do need to be docked in the hangar of the freighter itself, and the rest is the same as transferring resources to and from your starship, storages, containers, and exocraft. If you do install a matter beam upgrade, however, for your freighter, you are going to be able to transfer items from your freighter's inventory no matter how far away you are from it, which is a nice little piece of technology to have. And that brings me nicely onto upgrading your freighter. Now, first things first, unlike your starships and your multi-tools, and as of the creation of this video, you cannot currently upgrade the class of your freighter, so the only way you can get your hands on an S-Class one, for example, is by finding it, which I'll show you how to do quickly at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. So, similarly to starships, freighters can jump through space using warp cells or warp hypercores, and a freighter's base hyperdrive range is similar to that of a starship though you can easily increase this by installing hyperdrive upgrades. It's also worth noting that Starship hyperdrive upgrades cannot be installed onto your freighter, but if you want to install upgrades to your freighter, you have to make sure you're up at the upgrade control station on board your freighter, and then you can research upgrade blueprints, similar to how you do that on the anomaly. And if done correctly with a bunch of S-Class upgrades, the maximum a freighter could travel is a whopping 6,400 light years, which is which comfortably beats my currently well upgraded S-Class squid ship by nearly 5,000 light years, so you may as well upgrade your freighter and jump through the galaxy using that, instead of your starship. So the hyperdrive upgrades and the matter beam aren't the only things you can install onto your freighter to improve its stats. You can also add other technology components such as a temporal warp computer, which is going to grant you the ability to travel to all coloured systems. There are also interstellar scanners which allows you to scan the economic and conflict data of systems before you warp there. And finally, you can also improve other aspects of your freighter through upgrades including its fuel efficiency as well as upgrading your overall fleet. So that's involving improving fleet speed, fleet combat, fleet exploration, fleet mining and fleet trading. So it's definitely worth you spending some time making sure your freighter and fleet are upgraded to the max. And this brings me on to frigates. Now, I won't go into the full detail about frigates in this video because we'll be here for a very long time. But make sure you subscribe to my channel as I'll be doing a similar video to this where I'll go over everything you need to know about frigates. But to summarize, they are larger than starships but smaller than freighters. And in Nomad Sky, you can build a fleet of frigates to go with your freighter and you can own up to 30 of them at any given time. Once you have your freighter of your own, of course. Your frigates can then be sent out on expeditions to other star systems where you'll earn rewards such as units, rare resources and other rare items. Your fleet of frigates can be commanded from your freighter's fleet control room and if you build more than one of these it will allow you to send them off on more than one expedition at a time. And that's the TLDR of frigates. A full in-depth video on them will be coming to my channel next month so make sure you're subscribed for that. So, even though you can't upgrade the class of your freighter, you can, in fact, customise the colour of them. So, you can use paint blueprints, which are going to cost you 5,000 nanites a pop to permanently unlock them, which isn't exactly cheap, but it's not super expensive either. And you can unlock these and apply these paints from the upgrade control station on board your freighter. So, as of the creation of this video, the colours you can unlock are red, orange, yellow, green, turquoise, blue, purple, pink, white and black. So, a decent selection to make your freighter your very own. So, one of the key features of freighters is base building within the freighter itself, meaning you can have a fully kitted out base wherever you decide to travel, whilst also giving you access to freighter specific machines and mechanics. One of the main plus points of building a base within your freighter is they have unlimited energy so you don't need to faff around with batteries, solar panels and electromagnetic generators and things like that. That require power, so they will just work. The endurance update added a deeper and more varied base building system for freighters which included exterior platforms and catwalks to get some truly amazing views from your freighter itself. 
And unlike the on-planet base building systems, the freighter base building has some components and rooms unique to the freighter itself. And these include, but are not limited to, a fleet command room, a stellar extraction room, a scanner room, and the Obsol Exocraft materializer. So, one thing to note about bases on freighters, and I think this might still be a bug actually, is that if you decide you want to buy a new freighter, and you've got a fairly customised base in your current freighter, you don't always get the prompt to transfer your base to the new one. However, there is a workaround about this, so if you leave a single item in your freighter cargo, it doesn't really matter what it is, so it could just be something like ferrite dust or whatever, you should then be prompted to transfer everything when you buy that new freighter. Now, if this is fixed, great, but leave a comment below because I haven't changed freighters in a long, long time, hence the reason I don't have footage for it. I've not personally done much in terms of base building within my freighter, however, but it certainly looks like I'm missing out a little bit because it looks great. So if you're into base building, there's plenty of opportunity to do that on your freighter itself. So, in No Man's Sky, not all freighters are in fact inhabited, and you may stumble upon a derelict freighter when out and about in space. Or you could just buy coordinates to one off the scrap dealer on board any normal space station for a few million units. But either way, each derelict freighter has its own story to tell. As you explore through them, you're going to uncover hints about the fate of the crew members by retrieving ship logs, and also whilst fighting off some biological horrors whilst you're at it. But a little side note is that your game will not save when you're exploring it, so make sure you explore the entire thing. And by doing so, you will of course be granted a wide variety of rewards for exploring those derelict freighters, and these can include, but are definitely not limited to, cargo bulkheads, salvage fleet units, repair kits, and other rare resources such as hypnotic eyes, salvage frigate modules, and upgrade modules for your exosuit, starship, and multi-tool. So, if you've got a few million spare, pop on up to the scrap dealer and buy an emergency broadcast receiver, then head on out into space and engage your pulse drive. And then you should come across a derelict freighter where you're going to get some tasty rewards, but make sure you go armed because they are very dangerous. And bringing it back down to the planet, when you're wandering around you may come across a crashed freighter, and you can probably spot them a mile away because they're fecking huge. If you wanted to find them quicker though, you could head to a transmission tower and solve a puzzle to find them that way instead. But once you've come across a crashed freighter however, if you have your terrain manipulator and a weapon of some sort like a plasma archer or a geology cannon, you can uncover storage units around the crash site and they're going to contain things like units, nanites, or some other semi-rare resource worth a bit of money. But make a note, these containers will emit a deadly radiation that's going to blast through any of your exosuit protection measures. You can though cut it off if you have your minotaur nearby by jumping on in it. And the final thing to mention about crash freighters is each one has a distress beacon that can grant you a blueprint and start a secondary mission. Right, so I did promise you I'm going to give you the fastest way to find S-Class freighters, so let's get to it. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there are two types of freighter, regular freighters and capsule freighters, and the method for getting S-Class of each is slightly different, so let's start with regular freighters. You're going to want to travel to a wealthy 3 star system, and once you're there flying around a bit, a fleet with a freighter and some frigates will likely warp into the system, but before you board the freighter, you need to make sure that you're going up to the space station, jump in and out of your ship to create a restore point. And once you've done that, you can then fly back out into space, head over to that freighter and then board it. And once you've done that, jump out of your ship and you can use your analysis visor to inspect the class of it. Now if it ain't an S-Class, then go ahead and reload that restore point you made on the space station just a minute ago, and repeat the steps of boarding the freighter, inspecting it, and reloading the restore point until the freighter is an S-Class one. So on to capsule freighters. Now these are either the Venator or the Sentinel one, and this one has a few extra steps, and I would highly, highly recommend you own a ship with high damage and high defense capabilities here. So, you can only get these capsule freighters by engaging in space battles and ultimately rescuing the freighter from the pirates, and since the Echoes update, this has made them a little bit more difficult. So, what you want to do again, is find yourself a 3 star economy system and make a note of its name. You also need to make sure you have played 3 hours of the game since you last encountered a space battle as well. Now, you need to warp around nearby systems four times. Now, it's important you only do this four times. And once you've done the fourth one, go to that system space station and make yourself a restore point, similar to how you do with a regular freighter. 
Now, head on back out into space and find the three star system you made a name of a second ago and then warp into it and you should warp right into the middle of an epic space battle. And in that space battle there is going to be a capital freighter that you need to defend, so either a Venator or a Sentinel one, and of course a pirate freighter attacking it. And your job is to destroy this pirate freighter before it destroys the other capital freighter. So once you've gone ahead and done that, if you board the freighter you rescued a minute ago and inspect its class, if it's not an S class you're going to need to reload your restore point and repeat the steps of destroying the pirate frigate, I mean freighter, until it's an S class. Simples. Now even though these methods do absolutely work, there is no telling how many times you're going to need to reload the steps until the freighter you want is an S class. It could be S class straight away or it could take 10, 20 or even 50 reloads, there really is no telling. But if you want an S class freighter, that is how it's done. And there you have it folks, there is absolutely everything you need to know about freighters, their frigates and everything in between, including how you can get your hands on your very own S-Class freighter. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You can also now become a channel member as well, where I'm going to be posting coordinates to a whole bunch of super rare and unique items and places to visit. You'll also get yourself some unique emojis and badges when leaving comments. What's not to love, right? And as always, thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.